Three years on from the Not Now, Not Ever report, domestic violence remains an overwhelming issue for Queensland. There have been more than 16,000 breaches of domestic violence orders in the past 10 months. In the state's north, police say high rates of the crime are draining resources, with officers attending multiple call-outs every night and drowning in paperwork. Reporter Sally Rafferty accompanied a patrol from Townsville's Kerwin station. Senior Sergeant Jason Brosnan works out of one of the busiest stations in North Queensland. He says Kerwin is the region's unofficial domestic violence capital. The informant thinks that a male has thrown a woman through a glass window or door. Apparently she's screaming. It's not long before crews are called to another domestic violence complaint. Informant states that they are also banging on her doors and refusing to leave. Since 2014, Kerwin has seen an 85% increase in domestic violence incidents. In 2017, Kerwin Division had 1,700 incidences of domestic violence, approximately. So that equates to three and a half or 3,400 hours, police hours, spent just looking at domestic violence. You're under arrest, mate, for breaching a DV order, yeah? It's a similar situation around the state. In North Rockhampton, domestic violence breaches have increased by almost a quarter in the last 12 months. Police say changes designed to streamline domestic violence cases have also become a source of frustration. So this results in the officers having to attend the same address multiple times to serve multiple pieces of paperwork, which again, takes its time. And a lot of these people don't want to have that paperwork served on them. It's a dangerous cycle for police and victims alike, as this woman will call Samantha knows only too well. I left about eight or nine times and went to a different place every time. Um, like I had to get out of where we are because of how severe the violence was. Last year, the problem in North Queensland prompted the establishment of a special court for domestic violence matters. Based on the Gold Coast model, it operates out of Townsville two days a week, processing up to 120 applications. Samantha says it's a step in the right direction, but court remains daunting for many. It's horrible. It's like especially the first time that you're going to court for a DVO. Some prosecutors say changes are needed so they can act on behalf of victims who can't face the process. Greatest frustration uh, would have to be uh, an aggrieved who decide she no longer wishes to uh, proceed with the application. Senior Sergeant Brosnan says while it's a good thing more people are reporting domestic violence, it'd be much better if they could just have respectful relationships. Sally Rafferty, ABC News. And the Minister for the Prevention of Domestic Violence joins me. Di Farmer, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. We just saw Samantha in that story describe the court process as horrible. Would you consider changes so that police body camera can be used as evidence instead of victims having to attend court? I think, Jess, that we have to do everything we can to make it easy for a victim of domestic violence to actually be able to follow through and, um, and see the perpetrator um, come to justice. We've already done quite a lot in that space um, in terms of providing specialist domestic violence courts and that was mentioned obviously in that story. Um, we've also got CCTV cameras in all of our courts now so that a victim doesn't have to feel like uh, if their accuser, uh, if the person they're accusing is, um, is actually representing themselves, for instance, that they don't have to feel like they're in physical proximity to that person. So all of those things are important, but well, there's always more that needs to be done. So you would consider changes to make it easier, to make the process less daunting or, or dreadful, as that victim described it? I think that's something that we all want. That's something the Attorney General um, would have to consider, but um, there's not a person uh, from the Premier down in our Cabinet who doesn't want to make it um, as comfortable as it possibly can be under the circumstances for people in this situation. Police in that story also raised some frustration about the sheer volume of paperwork. Is that something that's been raised with you? We've been doing a lot of work with police. There's been um, a lot of education, a lot of support for police in the last few years. But again, we want to, we are intent 
on making this as, um, as supportive as possible and as easy as possible for people to get out of these circumstances. And that includes the police and anyone else who's working with domestic violence victims. Figures out today show that in the last 10 months about 130 domestic violence orders were made every day in mm. Queensland. Given the magnitude of the problem, is there enough money being spent in this area? Look, we've spent, uh, we've committed over $323 million to um, to implementing our domestic violence reforms, but I know um, there is always need for more. And DV Connect is a really, really important support line um, for victim of, victims of domestic violence. They get over 100,000 calls a year. So today I'm announcing that we've allocated an extra $350,000 to DV Connect um, so that they can make sure that they are getting to the priority calls um, as quickly as possible and we're supporting as many people as we possibly can. Minister, appreciate your time. Thank you.